back to show you, or really demonstrate, how to run an NMR Spectrum. This is Mary's quick and easy NMR. I really do not use a very elaborate process in running NMRs when we run them in our sophomore level lab. Um, there are those that would spend, I mean actually if you're doing research grade work, you probably have to spend about 30 minutes doing this, okay? But we're going to run 10 minute NMRs. So I showed you how to put the sample in, now what I'm going to do is show you how to run the spectrum. You'll notice I don't have gloves on, I don't have goggles on, you don't really need goggles in here. And you don't want to have gloves on because chemicals on your gloves could dissolve the keyboard. Um, to start running a spectrum, you need to go to File and click New. You want to write in what sample you're running. So I'm going to say this is unknown. I'm typing terribly. 52. I'm just putting a number down. You'll have some experiment number that you'll be instructed to put in. I'm putting one on both, well, I'll make this two, actually. Two, because I'm on my second experiment of the day here. The directory should always be capital D colon slash data slash NERS. I'll type that in one time so you can see me doing it. You can see what a bad typist I am. The user is me, so I'll just say NERS. Um, what you need to type in is the solvent you're using, and as you'll recall, we're using deuterated chloroform. Now to get that, you just scroll down. Okay, so if this were in here, you would just scroll down to deuterated chloroform, CD, CL3, and click on it. It didn't go in. I'll try again, here we go. I don't know, it's not going in. I don't know, I'm going to type it in. Something can go wrong. Sometimes things don't go well. It says use current parameters. We actually, the experiment we want to run is called a proton. We're going to be studying the protons in the sample. You would scan down to proton, which is right here. Whoops, I lost it. A little lower. You've got to get the right experiment. Proton, okay? That's what it's supposed to do. And then I'll just say... Um, you can write any title you want. I could just say, I could again write, just write unknown 52, and then it'll print that on the spectrum. I'm going to click OK. All right. The next thing you have to do is lock. Now, locking is the thing that students have, one of, have a very hard time understanding. And this probably won't make a lot of sense to you until we've got, gone over some NMR theory in class. So don't get too upset if this doesn't make sense. OK, I'm going to type lock. OK. When I type lock, I once again have to tell the instrument what solvent I'm using. And the solvent I'm using is CDCL3. This is deuterated chloroform. That's what you mixed in with your sample. Clicking on that, clicking OK. All right, now I'm going to type lock. Disk. And you'll see this crazy signal rolling all over the screen. This is the deuterium signal from the sample. This is actually an NMR of the deuterium in the, seat, in the deuterated chloroform. This is not a spectrum of your sample. This is what I call a dummy signal. It, you know, the physicists very intelligently worked out a way for the chemists to <laughs> evaluate the deuterium signal by the height of this line and the thickness of that line. So the thinner and the higher that line is, the better the deuterium signal is. And the deuterium signal is the internal monitor for the magnetic field. So right now, all I'm going to say, I could go into a big litany about this, but all I'm going to say right now is, the higher and the thinner that signal is, the stronger the deuterium signal is in the sample. The stronger the de de deuterium signal is. The stronger the deuterium signal is, the more even the magnetic field is. And you will learn NMR is all about the magnetic field and how even it is. It has to be very even. It has to be very homogeneous around the sample. You can't have a gradient in the field. This is our monitor of how even the field is, how homogeneous the field is. So we use the deuterium in the sample to see how the field is. 
If the deuterium signal is strong, the field is really even. If the field is really even, the signals from our sample, which are going to be protons, are going to be beautiful and sharp, and we're going to be able to read them. So without getting into a lot of theory there, that's what it's for. Okay, now, what I need to do is improve this signal. Okay, so I'm going to type RSH. RSH means read the shims, and I'm going to explain what shims are in a second. So I'm going to click read. This signal may move when I do this. You'll notice it's moving down. That means it's actually getting worse. So I have to tune it up a little bit. I'm going to now shim. To shim, I click on this lock box here. With the, I do a right click on the lock, lock box. And when I right click, oop, there it goes. Ugh. When I right click on the lock box, I get this little sub box that says, BSMS panel. I want to left click on BSMS panel. What comes up is this grid and it has all these different controls on it. What I want to do is a little tiny bit of shimming. Now, if any of you do carpentry, carpenters frequently use the term shim and what it refers to is taking little pieces of wood to make you know, a cabinet or a door frame level. You might notice that sometimes that there are little pieces of wood shoved under your cabinet in your kitchen. That's shimming, right? Shimming a magnetic field is adding and subtracting to the main magnetic field to make the magnetic field more even, like you're leveling the field, okay? So, these are the shims. You'll notice they are, little, they are controls that are based on an axis, an XYZ axis system. This axis system is around the main magnet or around the sample. So, so um, what I'm going to do is a little bit of shimming. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is hit Z. When I hit Z, I want to go to step plus or step minus. When I hit step plus or step minus, the signal's either going to go up or down. Going down means the signal's getting worse. Going up means it's getting better. I want to get this signal as high as I can. You eventually reach a point where it doesn't improve anymore, which it just did. So you back up and bring it back up. Okay? You would do a similar process on Z squared. Usually it doesn't change much. You use step plus and step minus to try to get that signal as high as you can. That's the goal. Okay, then you would do this on Z squared. Do not touch the rest of them. The rest of them were set with that RSH command. Again, we were evening the field around the sample. In the next YouTube, I'm going to actually run the spectrum.